Good evening. We are on Monday the 20th of June 2022. I'm going to be sharing with you the Bible in one year, day 89. I'll just begin with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this night be at my side to light and guard to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, Defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. This uh, day... Bible one year day 89 will cover 2 Corinthians 7 8 9 Psalm 89 the Gospel of Mark chapter 14 verses 53 to 72 so I'm going to begin with 2 Corinthians 7 since we have these promises beloved let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit and make holiness perfect in the fear of God. Paul's joy at the church's repentance. Open your hearts to us. We have wronged no one, we have corrupted no one, we have taken advantage of no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. I have great confidence in you. I have great confidence you confidence in you. I have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort. With all our affliction, I am overjoyed. For even when we came into Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without and fear within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted in you as he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoice still more. For even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I see that my letter grieved you, though, only for a while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting, for you felt a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation and brings no regret, but worldly grief produces death. For see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you what eagerness to clear yourselves what indignation what alarm what longing what zeal what punishment at every point you have proved yourselves guiltless in the matter so although I wrote to you it was not on account of the one who did wrong nor on account of the one who suffered the wrong. 
but in order that your zeal for us might be revealed to you in the sight of God. Therefore, we are comforted. And besides, our own comfort we rejoice still more at the joy of Titus, because his mind has been set at rest by you all. For if I have expressed to him some pride in you, I was not put to shame. But just as everything we said to you was true, so our boasting before Titus has proved true, and his heart goes out all the more to you as he remembers the obedience of you all and the fear and trembling with which you received him. Rejoice! because I have perfect confidence in you. The Word of the Lord. A reading from 2 Corinthians 8 and the heading is Encouragement to be Generous. We want you to know, brethren, about the grace of God which has been shown in the churches of Macedonia for in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of liberality on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will begging us earnestly for the favour of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this is not as we expected, but first they gave themselves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. Accordingly, we have urged Titus that as he had already made a beginning, he should also complete among you this gracious work. Now as you excel in everything in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in all earnestness and in your love for us, see that you excel in this gracious work also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I give my advice. It is best for you now to complete what a year ago you began not only to do, but to desire, so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a man has, not according to what he has not. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their want, so that their abundance may supply your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he who gathered much had nothing over, and he who gathered little had no lack. The next title, Commendation of Titus. But thanks be to God, who puts the same earnest care for you into the heart of Titus. For he not only accepted our appeal, but being himself very earnest, he is going to you of his own accord. With him we are sending the brother who is famous among all the churches for his preaching of the gospel. 
And not only that, but he has been appointed by the churches to travel with us in this gracious work which we are carrying on for the glory of the Lord and to show our good will. We intend that no one should blame us about this liberal gift which we are administering, for we aim at what is honourable, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of men. And with them we are sending our brother whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of this his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker in your service. And as for our brethren, they are messengers of the churches, the glory of Christ. So give proof before the churches of your love and our boasting about you to these men. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Thessalonians 9. The collection for Christians at Jerusalem. Now it is superfluous for me to write to you about the offering for the saints. For I know your readiness of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia saying that Achia has been ready since last year and your zeal has stirred up most of them. But I am sending the brethren so that our boasting about you may not prove rendering of this service. Only supplies the wants of the saints but overflows. Somehow or other, I have made a mistake. I have made a mistake. My apologies, I turned over two pages. I'll have to go back to the beginning of that sentence. But I am sending the brethren so that our boasting about you may not prove vain in this case, so that you may be ready, as I said you would be, lest if some Macedonians come with me and I find that you are not ready, we be humiliated to say nothing of you for being so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brethren to go on to you before me and arrange in advance for this gift you have promised so that it may be ready, not as an exaction, but as a willing gift. The point is this, he who sows sparingly and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that you may always have enough of everything, and may provide in abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your resources and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for great generosity, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God for the rendering of this service not only supplies the wants of the saints, 
that also overflows in many thanksgivings to God. Under the test of this service, you will glorify God by your obedience in acknowledging the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift the word of the Lord thanks be to God sorry about that mistake but as I turned the pages and I knew the wording because I typed it up and it was stuck together so my apologies I, I, that's why I, I don't like making mistakes but sometimes we do plus you know sometimes a little tired after typing you know so the next reading is still the same day the Bible in one year day 89 will be Psalm 89 and um, if my memory serves me right it is rather long I think it is one very it's not as long as 119 which will be cut uh, I'm thinking that I think that the with 119 they actually divide it up but this one is very long so bear with me God's covenant with David a masculine of Etan the Ezrahite a long psalm this I will sing of thy steadfast love O Lord forever with my mouth I will proclaim thy faithfulness to all generations for thy steadfast love was established for ever. Thy faithfulness is firm as the heavens. Thou hast said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your descendants for ever and build your throne for all generations. Selah. Let the heavens praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? God feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible above all that are round about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty as thou art, O Lord, with thy faithfulness round about thee. Thou dost rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, thou stillest them. Thou didst crush Rahab like a carcass. Thou didst scatter thy mighty arm. The heavens are thine. The earth also is thine. The world and all that is in it, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Tabor and Hermon joyously praise thy name. Thou hast a mighty arm. Strong is thy hand, thy right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of thy throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before thee. Blessed are the poor who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance, who exult in thy name all the day and extol thy righteousness. For thou art the glory of their strength. By thy favour our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Of old thou didst speak in a vision to thy faithful one and say, I have set the crown upon one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David my servant. 
with my holy oil I have anointed him, so that my hand shall ever abide with him. My arm also shall, shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. My steadfast love I will keep for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever and his throne as the days of the heavens. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinances, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with scourges, but I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once for all I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, his throne as long as the sun before me. Like the moon it shall be established forever, it shall stand firm while the skies endure, Selah. But now thou hast cast off and rejected, thou art full of wrath against thy anointed. Thou hast renounced the covenant with thy servant, thou hast defiled his crown in the dust. Thou hast breached all his walls, thou hast laid his strongholds in ruins, all that pass by despoil him. He has become the scorn of his neighbours. Thou hast exalted the right hand of his foes. Thou hast made all his enemies rejoice. Yea, thou hast turned back the edge of his sword and thou hast not made him stand in battle. Thou hast removed the separate scepter sep from his hand and cast his throne to the ground. Thou hast cut short the days of his youth. Thou hast covered him with shame. How long, O Lord, wilt thou hide thyself forever? How long will thy wrath burn like fire? Remember, O Lord, what the measure of life is, for what vanity thou hast created all the sons of men. What man can live and never see death? Who can deliver his soul from the power of Sheol? Selah. Lord, where is thy steadfast love of old, which by thy faithfulness thou didst swear to David? Remember, O Lord, how thy servant is scorned, how I bear in my bosom the insults of the peoples with which thy enemies taunt, O Lord, with which they mock the footsteps of thy anointed. Blessed be the Lord for ever. Amen. Amen. For some reason, I do not have here the gospel. It looks very much to me as if I have made a grave mistake. I should have um, typed up Mark 14, 22 to 52. So I will have to get the book and the Bible and I will have to read it because 
um, I apologise for the delay, but I, ha I have to do that because somehow or other I must have been overtired or something to overlook that. So I have this better Bible now that couldn't have done it with the other one. Sorry about the delay and the mistake, but it's how life is sometimes we, we make mistakes. I should have checked the folder that I had put it in. So it's going to be Mark 14 verses, and I, I know that I typed it up. I absolutely remember typing up 22 to 52. So, yes, I did. I did type it up. I failed to print it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read it from 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 the Bible itself. And I did it on Sunday as well. So I'm apologizing now for it not being in this folder. And I will read it from the Bible. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the title is The Institution of the Lord's Supper. And as they were eating, he took bread, and blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The next title, Peter's Denial Foretold. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives and Jesus said to them, you will all fall away for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. The next title is Jesus Prays in Gethsemane. And they went to a place which was called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to thee. Remove this cup from me. Hmm. 
yet not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The next title, The Betrayal and Arrest of Jesus. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I shall kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away safely. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Master, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not seize me but let the scriptures be fulfilled and they all forsook him and fled and a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body and they seized him but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked the gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for listening. I've learned something tonight that I can read from that Bible. It is a new Bible. I bought it. I've had it a few weeks. But I could not read this one um, as I've done because the font in this one is so tiny. I would have real issues because of my cataracts. Now, I've read that because I did. I have. I obviously hadn't printed off or put put that reading that I just did in the folder, and I didn't check the folder because I I do a lot of work and maybe I get distracted. I'm old, remember, <laughs> so it wasn't there. And I thought, well. It's a good font. I can read it. It, it, it helps me that it, do the typing quicker because I can read it better. So what I'll do, I have typed up to 91. So when we get to 92, I will I will try. I'll, I'll do an experiment because it the the readings are taken from different sections of the Bible, so there will be gaps. But the priest said to me yesterday when I was the reader to take a pause between the first reading, pause, then do the psalm and the response, 
and pause and then do the second reading and then pause so I'll just do the the natural pauses and have to search the Bible to find the next reading so I don't it, it won't be going smoothly like when it's all typed out but I'll try it because it will save me a lot of time if I'm not typing up we'll see how it goes along but so in two or three days time because I can do the other two that are typed up and then I'll try to read the whole of the readings from this Bible and see how I get along and if it doesn't work out I'll have to go back to typing so thank you so much for listening may God bless you and heal you and always be happy and joyful in the Lord so God bless the rest of your evening Thank you so much. Bye-bye.